we're just four days away from NFL free agency beginning, and are the Patriots targeting luxurious need in a trade and extension? We'll talk about that, but also the latest surrounding Jacoby Brissett as the veteran quarterback is continuing to be linked to the New England Patriots as we enter the free agency period. Before we get into the latest rumors surrounding our Patriots, I want to get 1% better every single day in every single week. Last week, our highest video in terms of likes was 277. This week, I want to get to that 300 number, and it should be on this video. Show me you love the Patriots by hitting that thumbs up icon, and let's get into the rumors surrounding Legereus Sneed. Because the latest suggests that the Patriots, Elliot Wolf, and Gerard Mayo have checked in with Brett Veach and the Kansas City Chiefs surrounding the all-pro caliber cornerback. This is what Mark Daniels reported just a couple days ago. According to a source, the Patriots did inquire about Snead, but that interest was described as the team doing due diligence on the player. At this point, it doesn't seem that the Patriots' level of interest in Snead is serious. That's fine. But should the level of interest from New England on Legereus Sneed be higher than just due diligence? And should it be a serious interest? Because he was one of the best cornerbacks in all of football last year. And if you added him to this Patriots CB room, it would become one of the best, if not top three, in the entire NFL. You look at what Sneed has done since entering the National Football League. He actually started his career as a safety and then kind of transition to that cornerback role he's always been someone not afraid to tackle and I love a cornerback and I know Bill Belichick loved it we'll see how the Patriots coaching staff loves it but I think everybody wants a corner that is willing to get down and dirty in the run game and make some tackles and you just see what he's been able to do from a ball hawk position he's always had multiple interceptions a season he's always getting his hands on footballs breaking up passes when you look even deeper at what excuse me what Legere Sneed did this season well he was one of the best coverage corners in the NFL only allowed a completion percentage of 51.9 a quarterback rating was 55.9 that is elite right there he did not allow a touchdown in the regular season Sneed cemented himself as one of the top CBs in the NFL. And if you look at the CB room, by the way, that the Patriots currently have, and I do want to make note as well that Alex Austin is returning to New England. The Patriots picked up his one-year deal for next season. It's the exclusive rights free agent, so they're bringing him back for this upcoming year, so Austin will be on the roster. But you already have Jonathan Jones. You have Christian Gonzalez at that one-two spot. Miles Bryant's a free agent in that nickel role he had last year. You have Alex Austin locked in as your fifth, fourth corner right now with Marcus Jones being that person that's likely going to be the nickel or slot corner, at least right now. But if you added Legereus Sneed to the CB room, you move Jonathan Jones back to that nickel slot role, which he excelled at prior to being pushed out as a boundary. You have Gonzo and Sneed opposite sides of each other with Jonathan Jones inside in nickel packages. That is the best three-man cornerback room in the NFL. I'm willing to say that, and I don't care of one bit about it. And then you have Marcus Jones and Alex Austin as your fourth and fifth corners for depth. That is fantastic, if you ask me. But what would it cost for New England to trade for Legereus Sneed? Because he did get franchise tagged, but he's given the chance to go out and talk with other teams on a potential trade and extension. I think this is what Brett Veach in Kansas City would want. I think there's a lot of teams that will have interest in Sneed because, well, he's only in is going to be entering his fifth year, and he's been fantastic, and he's just on that rise, right? I think it's going to cost you your number 34th pick if you did want to deal for Legereus Sneed. That's the biggest question for Elia Wolf in New England is, yes, he's a terrific ball player. He'd make this one of the best secondaries in all football, but should New England do it? And that's what I'll ask you before I give you my answer. Would you do this trade for Legereus Sneed? Would you send 34 for the cornerback from Kansas City? Type A for accept, type D for decline. As good as he is, I'm not doing this trade. The Patriots need these pecs the best assets they have possible for their offense. That is the biggest issue. As good as Snead would make this defense, I don't think it's worth doing so when you're not ready to compete right now. If this roster was a playoff caliber roster, well then yes, I'd be all in on trading an early second round pick for Legereus Snead or a late first round pick to extend him as well. 
but they need those for offense. I would trade 34 for T. Higgins because you need those offensive weapons, and you might be using 34 on a wide receiver. So I'm making a deal for someone like that, not someone on defense. But I would do this. I would consider a 2025 second-round pick because, well, if you send a second-round pick next year, you are planning to address your offensive needs this year you get better, you still have your first in 2025, and then you still have that elite cornerback room for the next four to five seasons, and all it takes is a second-round pick next year. I would consider that. I would send, I will say this, a third-round pick in this year's NFL draft for LeJarrius Sneed. I just expect his market to be closer into that second-round, late first-round range as he is one of the best young corners in all of football. More to get to surrounding the New England Patriots, but we are going to be the number one spot for New England Patriots free agency coverage. And like I said, if we get to 9,000 subscribers before the tampering period opens up at noon Eastern time on Monday, March 11th, I will do a beer bong on a show. We are damn near 250 subscribers away. Join the channel. Stay involved with your New England Patriots. All right, next up in the second portion of today's episode is Jacoby Brissett coming home to Foxborough because he has been linked to the Patriots a ton prior to the free agency tampering period opening up. It's coming from U Stadium, Benjamin Albright, Ben Violin, who said the Patriots have, quote-unquote, real interest in bringing Jacoby Brissett back to Foxborough. U Stadium reported that they want to bring him back to be a bridge or a mentor to a quarterback they draft at number three. Benjamin Albright, who's a National Football League reporter, and he covers the Denver Broncos specifically, did a QB prediction list, and he predicted Jacoby Brissett re-signing, or coming back to New England, I should say. And I completely agree with this sentiment and believe that the Patriots should sign Jacoby Brissett. Bring him home. And I know that people are going to be in the comments saying, we don't need Jacoby Brissett. We have Bailey Zappi to be our backup quarterback for the number three overall pick, assuming New England goes in that direction. I'll tell you why Jacoby Brissett should be the backup quarterback rather than one of Mac Jones or Bailey Zappi in just a bit. But make sure you take advantage of a flash sale going on right now at chatsports.com slash Patriot Shirt Combo. These are some elite tees right here. You're going to get them both in one package, the Patriots throwback t-shirt, the long sleeve throwback, blue and red, contrasting styles. It's on sale, usually $69, no shitting you, nice, but right now it's $49 when you go to chatsports.com slash Patriot shirt combo. I believe it's only on sale for 24 hours, so take advantage right now. Link will be in the description and comments of today's video. Well, the reason why Brissett should come back to Foxborough is because he is one of, if not the most elite backup quarterback in the entire NFL. You saw what he's been able to do for Miami, Indianapolis, Cleveland, Washington. When he plays, he actually is decent, but he's also one of the best locker room and film quarterbacks that our league has to offer. But I want to focus more on his play right now because in 2022, he started 11 games for the Cleveland Browns when Deshaun Watson was suspended. You know who the offensive coordinator for the Browns was in that time, by the way? Oh yeah, it would be Alex Van Pelt, the current OC for the New England Patriots. And Brissett did a fine job. Listen, he's not going to go out there and put up MVP caliber numbers and lead you to the postseason. That's not what he's going to do. But if you needed him to play in a game due to an injury or just fill in and give a rookie quarterback an extra two or three weeks to get his feet under him, well, then he can absolutely do that. And I love that he's already had experience playing in front of the Patriots fans at Gillette Stadium. He played in three career games for New England. He filled in in 2016 in the second half of that game against the Dolphins where Jimmy G left with a shoulder injury. He started on Thursday night football against the Houston Texans where they actually shut out Houston 27 zip. But then in the following week against the Buffalo Bills, they also got shut out and lost that game. I believe it was 17-0, if I'm not mistaken. But he has experience playing in that area, and I'd love to bring Brissett home because not only is he a great quarterback that can mentor a young QB at number three, but he can spot start if needed. You saw what he was able to do in 2022. He also started for Indianapolis in 2019. Wasn't shown on that list four graphic of his last four seasons. But Brissett can play and be serviceable if needed. Like I mentioned, if he is the starter, you're not expecting a lot of wins. You're not expecting a postseason run. 
but you can expect at least competent quarterback play, which if we're going to be honest here, and let's have a conversation, the Patriots didn't have any competent quarterback play last season between Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones. So should the Patriots sign Jacoby Brissett? Type S for sign, type P for pass, be Elliott Wolf, be the de facto GM of the New England Patriots. Let me know what the Patriots should do down below. I'll say it one more time if you haven't gotten my message just yet. It should be a no-brainer. I don't think it would be that expensive. My contract projection for Jacoby Brissett would be about a two-year, $18 million deal. Maybe it's a one-plus-one option where he can opt out after the first year or the team has an option after year one. But $9.5 million per season for one of the best backups in all football. He might end up starting the first two or three games if the coaching staff in front office doesn't believe that rookie quarterback is ready. But I wholeheartedly believe the New England Patriots will draft a quarterback at number three, whether it be Drake May or Jaden Daniels, no to J.J. McCarthy, whether it be J.D. or Drake May, and let Jacoby Brissett help them learn the ways in the NFL, but also start if need be. Should be an absolute no-brainer for Elliott Wolf and Gerard Mayo. Make sure you are subscribed because, well, if the Patriots do sign Jacoby Brissett in free agency, we will have you covered with a video on top of it. We will have everything whether it be re-signings, whether it be trades, whether it be anything. When that opens up on Monday, March 11th, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss a thing around the New England Patriots.